look, I want to work on problems that may take longer than one or two or three years, but when we get done, it can make a hundred times improvement to somebody's business. Hello, and welcome to another episode of On Purpose, where I interview intriguing leaders about their purpose. Today, I am thrilled to be joined by Arvind Krishna, the CEO of IBM. Arvind, thank you so much for joining me today. Kristen, it's such a pleasure to be here with you. And I'm such an admirer of both you and Zoitis. Same here, and we're very, very grateful for IBM's partnership um, on a number of things. But let me start with, as I read your LinkedIn profile, um, it said that you were a huge fan of wild ducks, but somehow I don't think that means I will find you by the pond with binoculars. So tell me a little bit of what I'm a fan of wild ducks means. The idea is that you need people who are uh, not afraid to think outside the box, outside the norm, and you must treasure and cherish these people. And the underlying story comes from if there's a wild duck flying over your farm and it lands and you feed it for the winter, the likelihood it can ever get up and fly out again and take risk is very low. That's why you must cherish wild ducks. And we really go out of our way to cherish such people, especially in our R&D organization, because they are the ones who make breakthroughs happen. Talk to me a little bit about, you know, growing up and what made you um, attracted to working in technology as a career. When I was in high school, realized that I loved math and physics uh, and really wanted to apply them. That led me to engineering school. I saw what you could do with analog controls and I saw what you could do with digital controls. And it was an epiphany. I mean, the answer was, really? I mean, digital is so much easier, so much simpler. Why would anyone do anything any other way? And I was convinced, and this was like 1982, that the whole world would go digital as soon as it could. Well, maybe a little naive, but over 40 years, we have seen that happen. And applying that to everything became a passion. Talk to me a little bit about the transformation that IBM is under right now, and you know the role of your senior leaders in helping drive that. At the beginning, IBM was about tabulating machines. We then went to semiconductors and mainframe computers. Now we are largely software and consulting. And as you think about that evolution, the pandemic at the beginning of last year gave a great opportunity to help define what we're doing now because everybody was much more concerned about digital transformation. So our consulting business is on fire. Everyone needs to take complexity out of their IT environments. So automation is getting to be on fire. Everyone needs to take value from their data. So artificial intelligence and everyone is using clouds as well as on-premise and uh, their own data centers. So hybrid cloud. So it really gave us an opportunity to accelerate this current transformation, which maybe we could call it the fourth era for IBM over the last 110 years. IBM has been known um, for decades as you know one of the hotbeds of basic research. You've really led for so long in that space. You know, as you became CEO, how do you think about continuing to fuel that innovation? So the lens that IBM takes on the world is we'd like to solve problems that are really big and make an impact for our businesses and for society. So then you say, look, I want to work on problems that may take longer than one or two or three years, but when we get done, it can make a hundred times improvement to somebody's business. Worrying about cybersecurity, worrying about applying AI and data to helping people's technology landscapes, helping people predict where the business might want to go, securing supply chains. So as we focus people in, that becomes the guardrails. But back to my point on wild ducks, let them also go explore in there. Research should never be top-down driven. Top-down, you set goals and set guardrails, but let people think outside the box because that's when you get the maximum benefit from that team. Talk to me a little bit about what your purpose is and sort of what drives you. We want to work on problems that matter. So the one that really excited me is when I read about IBM uh, using tabulating machines that really helped define the New Deal back in the 1930s here and it, how it let the government really uh, compute what everybody is going to get in terms of social security and in terms of their incomes being tabulated. You go on from there to helping uh, retail banking expand and scale like crazy in the 1960s and 70s helping the Apollo lunar landing program, inventing risk computing, now on the verge with AI 
and uh, solving questions and answers and how AI can really help scale processes within a company. I believe quantum computing is going to help redefine many businesses. By the way, I think in a decade, even Zoetis will take advantage of quantum computing. Maybe not quite yet, but initially, I think materials and risk will get impacted by that probably in the next five. Garvin, I want to thank you so much for your time today and for the inspiration that you as a leader continue to provide, not just in IBM, um, but across industries. So thank you so much for joining me for another episode of On Purpose. See you again next month.